All right. So uh, this has become actually part three of your factor analysis series because part two abruptly stopped due to the recording stopping. Uh, so we were here. So I was explaining about the rotation methods and I said that there are two ways in which you could adopt rotation methods. I'll explain about orthogonal and oblique. So orthogonal has three types, Varimax, Quartimax and Equimax, Equamax. However, oblique has direct oblimin and Promax. See, it has been a practice that, you know, Varimax has suited almost everything. So the most common method is Varimax, also short for variable maximization. Vari variable maximization. So we're going to use this only. So this particular method that is Varimax tries to redistribute factor loading such that each variable measures precisely one factor ideal scenario. So basically what we would get in our rotated component matrix is one factor ideal scenario that is each variable will load meaningfully on one and only one factor. So you see here that the variable one now loads on only the second factor that is 0 0.740. Now second variable loads on first factor. Likewise, each of these variables are going to load on only one and one, one and only one factor. So rotation is identified for simple interpretable factors to make loading clear and create a simple structure. So as you saw that this component matrix did not have a simple structure. Each of your variables were loading. You know, they were having cross loadings, most of the variables. So that complicated our interpretation. So now rotated component matrix is the one you should be interested in. And this will allow us to give up, to give some very interesting results. So basically this, this is going to answer our question that which variable aspects or which, so basically which aspects are represented by which factors. So now is the time that we try to interpret each of our factors. Okay, so we can see that our analysis has given us four factors. So this component or factor is one and the same thing. I've been telling you this, I think, repetitively. Okay, so in factor one, we see that we have this variable, this variable, this variable, this variable, and this variable. So whichever loading you see over here, that means that particular variable has loaded meaningfully on that particular factor. So likewise, we have in factor two, uh, the first variable, the third variable, the fifth variable, and the last variable. Okay, so now let's try to interpret these factors. So let's look at the component one or factor one. It has questions like I received clear information about my unemployment benefit. It's clear to me what my rights are. It's easy to find information regarding my unemployment benefit. I've been told clearly how my application process will continue. I know who can answer my questions on my unemployment benefit. So more or less, can we say that this component can be named as a component explaining clarity of information? Okay, so that means we can have a good idea that, okay, this component one tries to highlight or bring up all those variables which are pertaining to clarity of information. Now on to component two. In component two, we have variables like Client's privacy is taken into account. Reception desk staff are friendly. I feel I'm taken seriously. And then the letters I receive have an appropriate tone of voice. So I see that, you know, component two can be named as the component pertaining to decency and appropriateness. Okay. Likewise, component three has my contact person succeeds in motivating me. My contact person takes his time with me. Uh, my contact person carefully prepares his interviews with me. My contact person uh, points out fitting job opportunities. That's it. So this component three is about helpfulness of the contact person. Okay. Likewise, component four. Agreements with me are followed through. I have clear agreements about the remaining procedures. My contact person always does what he or she promises. So there's a promise element in it and some agreement element. So we can say that the last component is about reliability of the agreements. Okay, so that's great. We have successfully understood our 
rotated component matrix which allowed us to understand uh, how does my each factor look like how can i really look at each of my factors in particular now on to commonalities now commonalities are nothing but sum of squared factor loadings so basically uh, if for each variable there was a factor loading here and you square it and then take a sum over it so that would become an entry in this column so each variable has a commonality against it written so this means that commonality is nothing but the proportion of each variable's variance that can be explained by the factors okay so it's like 0.55 would mean that 55.5 percentage of variance in this particular variable gets explained by the factor which is retained okay by all the factors basically combined so commonalities means all the shared information between all the factors which try to explain about this particular variable okay uh, initially it's one but after extraction since this variable got extracted to some particular factor then the amount of variance in this particular variable which got explained by that factor was this much 0.555 okay so variables with high extraction values over here means that you know these variables are well represented in the common factor space however if the variables have a lower value these are not well represented so as a rule of thumb we say that a commonality of less than 0.4 does not contribute much to the underlying factors okay so that was about commonalities which is nothing but the proportion of each variable's variance that gets explained by the retained factors so we have a value against each of the variables here now in the next video lecture we'll talk about our last important tables that is total variance explained and the scree plot thank you for watching the video